The Oxygen Advantage Programme, it contains seven exercises and each exercise has its own benefits um, and purpose. So the nose and blocking exercise, that allows us to restore nasal breathing. We get the benefits of nasal nitric oxide. That in turn improves the amount of oxygen delivered because of course nitric oxide is a vasodilator. It opens up blood vessels. So the 100,000 miles of blood vessels throughout the body are influenced by whether we breathe through the nose or whether we breathe through the mouth. And nose breathing helps to improve the amount of oxygen delivered to the heart. It increases oxygenation of tissues and organs. Our second exercise is to breathe light to breathe right. And the benefits of this is that it improves our, the body's tolerance to carbon dioxide. So increased carbon dioxide in turn opens up blood vessels, opens up the airways, and then we get the benefits of the Bohr effect. And the Bohr effect is a law that was named after a physiologist back in 1904 called Christian Bohr. And Christian Bohr said that the partial pressure of carbon dioxide dictates the release of oxygen from the hemoglobin. So in other words, when carbon dioxide increases, pH drops, the oxygen hemoglobin dissociation curve shifts to the right and more oxygen is released from the red blood cells. In order for oxygen to be released from the red blood cells, we need to hold on to carbon dioxide. So by reducing our breathing to, an, to allow an accumulation of carbon dioxide, we can improve the amount of oxygen delivered to the cells. The breed light to breed right during jogging, of course it has the same benefits and similar benefits to while during rest. It improves our tolerance to CO2. Also, by taking our attention from the mind into the body, dispersing it throughout the body, we have, you know, it's very beneficial in helping to quieten the mind. It's very helpful to make our run, our jog, into a meditation. And that it's a period of time that we're giving attention to ourselves, as opposed to giving our attention elsewhere. The breathing recovery improved concentration exercise, again, it's very helpful for stress and it's also very helpful to recover after physical exercise. Simulate high altitude training during walking. The benefits of this is that it teaches us to be able to tolerate a strong air shortage during competition. There's also a degree of psychological preparedness in that we're comfortable with pushing our body into that oxygen dash. And of course, by pushing the body into oxygen dash, we're lowering the oxygen saturation of the blood, and in turn that is reducing lactic acid buildup and delays the onset of fatigue. The kidneys also release the hormone EPO, and EPO sends a message to the bone marrow to produce more red blood cells. So it's improving aerob aerobic capacity. At the same time, the spleen is contracting and releasing more red blood cells into circulation. So all of the simulation of high altitude exercises, whether it's walking, whether it's running, cycling or swimming, or whether it's advanced simulation of high altitude training. Their purpose is to drive the body into an anaerobic state. And by doing that, it's dropping oxygen saturation. It's getting the benefits from a psychological point of view, from an aerobic point of view, and also from an anaerobic point of view. In summary, all of the exercises are helping to improve sports performance. So whether you're an endurance athlete that is relying on improving aerobic capacity, or whether you're a 200 meter sprinter that needs to improve anaerobic capacity. Each exercise will be able to offer you improvements in terms of sports performance. From the very basis of addressing dysfunctional breathing habits, improving your bowl score, which in turn is going to reduce breathlessness, to also delaying the onset of fatigue and also improving your aerobic capacity.